I'm Jiraya. Welcome back to my channel. And for today's video, we have four topics. Exam location, what will happen on the exam day, um, ano yung quick result, at saka ano yung NTLEX uh, computer adaptive system. So, exam locations, guys. Uh, as we all know, NTLEX sa Pearson View, pero hindi po lahat ng Pearson View nakikater po ng NTLEX exam. So, for Asians, our option is Philippines, India, and Hong Kong. So, Philippines po, isa lang po ang nakikater, uh, nakikater ng NTLEX, yung Pearson View sa Makati. And, if you are OFW, pinakamalapit po sa Saudi, sa Oman, sa Qatar, at sa UAE is India. And then, sa iba po na gusto pong mag-exam, din mag-bakasyon, meron po din po sa Hong Kong. Kung nasa Ireland naman po kayo, or sa New Zealand, meron po sa UK. Meron din po sa Australia. So, that's it for exam locations. So, kung saan kayo mag-exam, choice nyo na yon kung saan kayo comfortable. For me, in Philippines, para hindi na ako mag-adjust sa language, sa place, alam ko na kung saan, kasi nakapag-exam na rin ako dati ng HAD, so alam ko na yung Pearson View sa Makati, kung saan siya banda. Exam day. Right after you book your exam, mayroon po kayo ma-receive ng email na instruction ng Pearson View. Basahin niyo yun. At ang nakalagay lang naman doon is kailangan mo ng valid ID. So, uh, yung valid ID na minimin po doon is yung passport nyo. So, no passport, no exam. So, yun po yung pinaka-importante yung dalhin nyo on the day of the exam. Nakalagay din po dun sa email na kailangan nyo dumating 30 minutes before the exam. Lahat ng nakalagay din po dun sa email, yung protocol nila about rescheduling, uh, canceled exam, lahat na dun. Pero nakalagay dun, bring your valid ID and you need to be there 30 minutes before the exam. Bawal po malate. So, on the exam day, pupunta po ka sa Pearson View uh, with your passport. At uh, kung, uh, kung meron sa inyo nakapag-exam na ng HAD, actually same process lang siya. Pero sa mga hindi po nakapag-exam ng HAD sa Pearson View before, let's start. So, pagpunta niyo po doon, ang tahimik doon. <laughs> pagpunta niyo po doon, um, pupunta kayo sa counter, may babae doon, sasabihin niyo yung schedule niyo, kukunin niyo yung passport niyo, at may bibigay siya sa inyong paper. Pa, um, yung paper na yun, ipapabasa niyo sa inyo, yun po yung mga rules and regulations ng Pearson View, which is bawal magdala ng pagkain, bawal magdala ng notes, bawal magdala ng ball pen, lahat ng bawal. Watch, yun yung mga bawal doon. And then, meron din po doon waiver, na pipirmahan nyo if yung nag-agree kayo. So, after yung nabasa, babalik nyo sa kanila, tapos, um, magpapa, mag, pa-palm screening kayo. Ano ba sa Parang palm, iba yung fingerprint, pero sa kanila yung palm scanning. And then, pipicture lang kayo, and then, bibigyan kayo ng susi. Kas, para sa mga gamit nyo, sa cellphone, nakalagay doon sa instruction na bawal magdala ng cellphone at saka yung, yung cellphone ilalagay sa locker na dapat naka silent mode. Or, nilalagay nila doon turn off. Pero hindi ko doon turn off. Silent mode lang. And then, after nila kang bigyan ng susi, so, ako personally may cold intolerance. Sa mga lamigin dyan, nagtanong ako kung pwede magdala ng jacket. So, humayag naman sila pinagdala ko ng jacket. So, pagpasok nyo sa loob, guys, igagayad kayo nila. May isang tao na naman dun sa loob na may mga computers. I-check nila yung mga pockets nyo. Lahat ng pockets, dapat walang wadigo. Dapat walang pagkain, walang ball pen, wala lahat. At lahat talaga ng pockets, guys, i-check. Lahat. And then, tatanungin kayo kung si CR ba muna or hindi. And then, you orient kayo about sa scheduled breaks. So, yung NCLEX po, meron po siyang 3 scheduled breaks. Nasa inyo na yun kung iti-take your hindi. In my experience, hindi ako nakapag-scheduled break kasi nga, namatay yung computer ko after 75 items. Yung iba na umabot na ang 200, kailangan mo talaga mag-break. So, nasa sa inyo yun kung mag-break kayo or hindi. And then, 
uh, pag nag-agree ka na na magsa-start ka ng exam, meron uli doon guys na palm screening bago kayo papasok sa loob ng testing area. Sa testing area, may mga cubicle po doon na may mga computer. First, i-start nila and then tatawagan nila kayo pag umpisa na yung exam. So guys, sa computer uh, sa computer na yon pag upo mo doon, may bibigay din sila sa inyo na para siyang paper, laminated paper, tsaka pencil pen. Pero hindi siya pencil pen. Hindi ko alam po anong tawag. Pero, doon sa laminated paper, doon kayo magsusulat kung kailangan, kung may solvings. Once na naka, naka dumating na kayo sa assigned nyo na computer, makikita nyo doon, may instructions naman, babasahin nyo lang. Nandun yung pangalan nyo. Uh, babasahin nyo kung tama. I-check nyo lang kung tama ba yung pangalan nyo, tama ba yung spelling, at saka lahat doon may instructions. Then, next ka lang ng next. And then, about the exam, nakalagay doon na um, nakalagay doon sa screen about the exam. It's 75, minimum of 75 items and maximum of 265 items. At maximum time po is 6 uh, hours. Mamaya, explain ko kung bakit ganun. Yung NCLEX po, guys, um, para siyang HAD din, pero ang pinagkaiba lang, kasi sa HAD, mapaflag mo yung question, mababalikan mo, pwede ka mag-back. Sa NCLEX, guys, take note, once na nag-click ka na ng answer at nag-next ka na, yun na po yan. Wala na pong balikan. Make sure, pag hindi pa kayo sigurado sa answer niyo, huwag niyong in-next kasi hindi mo na mababalikan yun. And then, kung um, before kayo mag-exam guys, kailangan niyo maintindihan kung ano yung CAT. Kung ano yung uh, computerized adaptive testing. Kung bakit yung iba, nagsa-stop yung uh, computer, nagsa-shutdown yung computer hanggang 75 items. Yung iba naman, after 75 items, nagkukontinue at kung bakit yung iba nakakaabot ng 265. Compared to the dated pencil and paper test we all experienced in the past, computerized adaptive testing, or CAT, uses today's technology to tailor test questions to your ability level and achieve faster, more accurate, and fairer test results. At the forefront of using CAT technology for high-stakes examinations, NCSVM has been using CAT for NCLEX since 1994. Let's take a brief look at how NCLEX using CAT works. The goal of CAT is to identify each candidate's competence by determining the difficulty level of questions a candidate can consistently answer correctly. We've invited these candidates to a fitness center because we think their workout can quickly help you understand the principles behind CAT. Let's say each free weight represents a question and we want to determine how heavy a weight you can lift. In other words, how difficult a question you can answer correctly. In this example, the trainer has established that this size weight represents the passing standard, and this correlates to the minimum competence needed to practice entry-level nursing. The examination is designed to determine if you can consistently answer questions that are more difficult than the minimum competence standard, which in our example is this size weight. Lighter weights are easier to lift and represent questions that are less difficult than the passing standard. Heavier weights are more difficult to lift and represent questions that are more difficult than the passing standard. Each question, like each free weight, reveals more about the true competence level of the candidate. With each answer, Pat's calculation of your entry-level competence becomes more precise. When you answer a question correctly, you've provided evidence that you could probably answer easier questions correctly. For that reason, the next question selected will be slightly more difficult. Increasingly more difficult questions will be asked until you incorrectly answer a question. At that point, the next question asked will be slightly less difficult. If that question is answered correctly, then a slightly more difficult question will be asked next and so on throughout the remainder of your NCLEX exam. The NCLEX passing standard is illustrated by the blue line. Questions below the line are questions that are less difficult than the passing standard. Questions above the line are more difficult than the passing standard. The map represents both the difficulty of questions asked and the competence estimate of the candidate's performance. 
In this example, the candidate successfully answers a series of increasingly difficult questions. Then the candidate begins to answer some questions incorrectly. After answering the minimum number of questions required, the candidate reached a competence level that is significantly above the passing standard. When competency is determined, the examination is completed and the candidate passes. Conversely, when it is determined that the candidate is not competent, the examination ends and the candidate does not pass. The number and difficulty of the questions will vary for each candidate. This is true for candidates above and below the passing standard. Some candidates will be asked fewer questions because a competent pass or fail determination was made quickly, for they consistently answered questions either significantly above or below the passing standard. Other candidates, however, who had competence levels near the passing standard, either a little above or below, will be asked more questions in order to determine their pass or fail results. To ensure complete content coverage, all RN candidates will answer a minimum of 75 and a maximum of 265 test questions. PN candidates will answer a minimum of 85 and a maximum of 205 questions. Though most candidates finish in about two hours, you'll be given up to six hours to complete the RN exam or five hours for the PN exam. This includes a tutorial and all break times. So guys, ngayon na nga, narinig nyo ang explanation ng NCSBN. Hindi ko siya memorize. NCSBN. Anyways, uh, ilalagay ko po sa description box below yung link ng website nila para makita nyo doon yung marami silang videos na nilagay doon at yung video na, na nirecord ko lang din sa kanila din galing yun para maintindihan nyo mismo yung computerized adaptive testing nila. At tulad nga ng sinabi niya sa pag uh, i measure po nila yung performance ng exam mo depende um, sa every item na ma-answer mo kaya na halimbawa question number 1 at uh, nag-answer kayo at nag-next kayo wala nang balikan yun at malalagay na yun sa graph ninyo kung tama ba or mali so every right answer pataas po yung graph ninyo Pag mali naman yung answer nyo, pababa. So, depende po yan sa performance ng exam. I may measure nila yung ability nyo. So, be happy if yung exam nyo is pahirap na pahirap. It means yung graph nyo is paakyat. Mapapansin nyo yan. Meron dyan puro uh, SATA na type of exam. And after, biglang uh, magiging madali. Then, tapos SATA na naman. Kasi every time na correct yung answer nyo, pahirap na pahirap yung question. At, yun nga guys, may minimum silang 75 items. Uh, makikita nyo sa next video. A hypothetical scenario of somebody taking 60 items and ended up failing the exam. So, the test starts, and based on this person's answer, we continue to estimate his ability so the test keeps going and going and you can see that um i mean even though this is a hypothetical example but we try to use the data that mirror reality and you can see that the um, 95 percent confidence interval gets narrower and narrower our estimation is pretty precise so by the 60th item we start evaluation to see if this person is a passer or a failure. Person is clearly a failure, so person didn't pass the exam. And as you can see here, even though this person really didn't do so good, I mean, by the 15th item, you can see that, you know, he never quite got up to the passing standard after that. But because by the 15th item, we haven't covered the test plan content enough, we'll keep asking questions until the 60th and then we'll make a decision whether this person passed or failed. So guys, nakita niyo sa last video, meron po silang minimum of 75 items. Nakita niyo naman na i-evaluate nila kayo after 60 items. Kung uh, mas marami ba yung graph na nasa taas, mas marami ba kayo na-answer, or mas marami ba kayong, or na-maintain niyo ba yung graph niyo above the passing line, or yung graph niyo is below a passing line nila. So, 60 items, guys, doon nila i-measure. Doon sila magsa-start ng evaluate. 
pag yung graph nyo ay eh, nasa gitna, magkukontinue yung exam nyo. It means, after 75 items, hindi siya mag magsha-shutdown. So, kung nagkontinue yung uh, computer nyo after, after 75 items, may pag-asa po pa, pa po kayo. Pero, For some people, even with the maximum uh, number of items that they take, uh, we still wouldn't know for certain that if the person is a pass or a failure, such as in this case. So, again, at the 60th item, we begin evaluation. At this point, we don't really know for sure, so the person keeps getting questioned. Right? As you see here, even at, at the 250th item, the 95% confidence interval is still kind of straddling the line. But, you know, this person has already taken the maximum number of items, and the estimate is getting pretty precise. So at the end, we just look at the final estimate, whether the final estimate is above the line or not. And this person is not above the line, so that's a fail. So yun nga guys, hindi ibig sabihin na tapos nyo, bagsak na kayo, or natapos nyo pasado, depende po yan sa performance nyo. So guys, paano po hindi nyo natapos yung exam? At natapos na yung 6 hours? Some folks run out of time, such as here. So this is an RN exam. This person has been taking the exam for six hours. Six, hour, six hours later, she answered 180 items. We can't really tell, you know, because it's kind of straddling the, the line. We can't really tell if this person's a pass or a failure. So what we'll do here is that we will evaluate the last 60 responses this person gave. Like the suspense, whether she pass or fail. So we will evaluate all of the last 60 items. And that's a pretty stringent criteria because if you fall below the line even once out of the 60, that's not a passer. So you can see that for the last 60, all 60 is above the line. So this is a passing exam. So yan guys, nakita nyo naman na hindi ibig sabihin na hindi nyo natapos yung exam is bagsak na kayo. Hindi rin po ibig sabihin na pag hindi nyo natapos, pasado kayo. <laughs> Ang hirap. <laughs> Basta, um, mas maganda pag natapos nyo guys kasi nakita nyo naman yung root nila. Um, ibibase na yung uh, result ng exam mo sa performance mo in last 60 minutes sa last 1 hour mo na, pa, na performance doon nila ibibase kung pasalo ko o hindi so I, so mas naiintindihan ko na mas malaking chance nyo pag natapos nyo yung exam hindi ko alam basta guys complicated siya ang ma-advise ko sa do your best at may, may gagawin ako isang video about sa review materials na ginamit ko kung ano, kasi nakalagay doon yung test taking strategies kung alin yung difficult uh, mga examples ng difficult questions at examples ng easy questions kaya mararamdaman nyo kung akit nyo yung graph nyo or hindi if you're doing well sa exam or hindi meron dun sa book na yun at yun lang yung book na na yun ang ginamit ko at share ko yun sa next video na gagawin ko so, after ng exam pag natapos na kayo or if ever nag shut down yung computer nyo Yan, after nga na nag-shut down yung computer nyo, after nun may evaluation. Yung evaluation lang naman is about testing center, kung convenient ba, parang reviews lang ganun. Then after mo, natapos ng exam, after mo maglagay ng reviews nila, tataas mo na ulit yung kamay mo, at lalapit sila sa'yo, huwag kayong tatayo. If ever man mag-break kayo, tataas nyo yung kamay nyo. Anyway, instruct naman nila kayo kung paano yung mga protocols dun. Basta huwag kayong tatayo bigla, kasi magagalit sila. Ganun. So, after yung matapos yung exam, taas yun ang kamay nyo, then pupunta sila sa inyo, kukunin nyo yung laminated paper, and then pupunta kayo sa computer niya, mag-exit, mag-pan-screening mag, ulit kayo. It means natapos nyo na yung exam, and then pupunta ulit kayo dun sa, may, sa reception desk, kukunin nyo yung passport nyo, and then kukunin nyo na yung mga gamit nyo sa locker. And Lastly, for the quick result. Itong quick result, guys, pagkalabas na pagkalabas niya sa building, may mari may 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 receive kayong text message uh, from NCSBN, yung parang ano, email about 
acknowledgement na nagtake ng exam at meron din nung uh, isasabihin, uh, sasabihin nila dun sa email yung option nyo ng quick result. Uh, ilalagay doon na uh, pwede nyo ma-access yung quick result um, after 48 hours at mag-provide kayo ng $8 online yun. So, may link doon kung saan kayo pupunta to access the quick result. Kung hindi man, punta lang kayo sa account nyo sa NCSBN at makikita nyo doon. Pero kung gusto nyo guys, may narinig ako yung um, Pearson View trick. Tama. Pearson View trick. Uh, malalam, uh, sabi nila it works daw para hindi na kayo magbayad ng $8. Mas maganda pa rin pa magbayad ng $8. <laughs> Uh, pero pag nagtitipid kayo guys, um, ilalagay ko yung link ng mga mga vlog about kung paano gawin yung Pearson View trick. Ginawa siya ng friend ko, recently lang, na exam siya ng December 18 at gumana naman. Um, and then after 2 days, chinect niya sa website ng Texas BUN at nandun na nga yung pangalan niya at license niya. Ganun. So, kung gusto niyo makatipid, uh, gawin nyo yung Pearson View trick. Or, kung gusto nyo naman hindi kayo ma-hassle, magbayad lang kayo ng $8. Okay. So, guys, that's all for uh, this video. For my next video, uh, i-share ko dun yung mga study materials and kung paano mag-aral while working. Kung paano mo siya i-fit sa 12-hour shift in a week. So, guys, good luck sa exam and that's all and see you in my next video.